Uh, let me just uh, run through the uh, the uh, the order that we have. Senator Johnson is next. Uh, Senator Baldwin. After Senator Baldwin, Senator Ayotte. Uh, Senator Tester has joined us. Senator Levin has joined us. And uh, so, uh, Senator Johnson, you're next. And then, uh, Tammy, you're next. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Tedesco, uh, let's let's define unfunded liability. Uh, my my understanding of that is it's basically the amount of money you would need in a bank today to fund future benefits, correct? That's correct. What is the discount rate you've used in calculating that $96 billion in your uh, uh, Table 1 on page 2 of your testimony? Uh, that discount rate is actually um, uh, selected by OPM, and I think it's um, 4.7 or it's in the uh, roughly in the 5 percent zone, but I don't have the... That's correct. Uh, thank so, you. So again, you'd, you'd be assuming you have to make a 5% return on those invested funds in order to fund the, the future benefits, correct? That's correct, yes. And are we... Is there any investments right now that's guaranteeing 5% long term? Uh, no, there isn't. Uh, pretty, pretty the, um, the, the, so, so, yeah. so in other words, with a, lower, with a lower investment rate, that unfunded liability would be actually higher? That's correct, yes. And there's really no difference between unfund liability and liability. It's just something you've, you've got a liability that you've got to pay sometime in the future. Well, uh, I mean, in fact, I mean, there's really very little difference. Well, there is the liability. When there are assets supporting liability, then the difference between the two right, becomes the unfunded. Correct. Okay. Uh, I keep hearing that uh, the, the retirement system, the health care system, has been overfunded um, improperly. Now, as I'm looking at your table number one here, what I'm seeing is, is basically a $99 billion unfunded liability reduced by a $3 billion surplus in the FERS system. It doesn't look like there's anything that's been overfunded. I mean, other than you just segregate these little funds. And because of the, the calculation uncertainty of the discount rate, I don't see anything being overfunded in this fund. Is, is that an accurate assessment? Uh, it is accurate out of the five different items we have in that, uh, in that table, uh, the first piece is overfunded, but the other four represent... So, so again, explain to me, because I, I hear all kinds of complaints that we've just unfairly made the postal workers overfund their pension liabilities, their health care. What, what, what are they talking about there? I've never understood that. Well, th there are different arguments with respect to different programs. With regard to the FERS, uh, the argument is that there is a surplus there. Uh, further, that the surplus, if remeasured using postal-specific assumptions, would, would be even bigger, and and so the uh, the argument there is that the first. But again, that that surplus could be wiped away by a different assumption in terms of the discount rate. Th that's correct. Yes. And easily wiped away by just a little tweak in the discount rate. Quite honestly. It, yeah. it, it, so th there's there's really no overfunding that you can put your that you can really put any kind of confidence in it whatsoever. It could be just as easily way underfunded based on your discount rate assumption. Well, as we have said, those liability numbers have a high degree of uncertainty. Correct. Okay. Uh, if we go to a different type of health care plan as, as being proposed, uh, the testimonies that will save, the postal system would save $55 billion. Uh, $49 billion of that apparently out of, uh, uh, coming out of, at the expense of Medicare. Uh, but again, we, now we just heard testimony that 77% of postal workers are already in Medicare. Does that did that $49 billion, does that take into account the fact that 77% uh, of postal workers already are taking advantage of Medicare benefits? Um, yes, it does, that they're in Part A and B. Uh, right now, they're not using the drug benefit in Medicare, so that, that is a different, uh, that's not currently being used. Okay, so again, if we're taking a look at IOS, it's kind of like consolidating the books of the federal government here. So you might be saving $55 billion for the postal service, but you're increasing the liability to Medicare and some other parts of the federal government by $55 billion, correct? I mean, we're really, really just robbing Peter to pay Paul, or, is, or am I missing something here? We, we certainly report that, that the largest share of that, that $49 billion now, that 55 is re related to the Medicare integration. Much of that is from the Medicare program. Some of that is also premiums paid uh, for Part B by uh, retirees that would be enrolling, and some of it would be discounts from drug manufacturers that are flowing. And, and the, the remaining $6 billion would probably be the reduction in uh, cost to the postal system, primarily because you've got... Uh, uh, different actuarial pro postal specific assumptions. So that's that kind of 2% differential of uh, postal workers inside the FEHB, correct? No. Let, I'd like to clarify, if I could, maybe to put a little light on this. The differential, uh, what causes the overfunding, is the fact that when we do not integrate Medicare 
we in fact pay more for health benefits. The average health benefit cost for a federal retiree that is 65 years old, including a postal retiree, is about $7,000 a year. Postal Service pays 70%, retiree pays 30%. In the private sector, a wraparound plan averages somewhere between four to $4,000 to $4,500 a year. If we did that, same math, we pay 70%, the employee retiree pays 30%, there is a differential. When you take that and amortize that with a million people over the lifetime of those people, that's where the big overfunding is. What we're asking for, Senator, is to be able to be treated just like anybody else. We're the second largest payer into Medicare. We would just like to have integration of Medicare A, B, and D paid just like everybody else. That eliminates the $55 billion of overfunding. Now, there there are certainly saying. private sector companies that provide retiree health benefits, correct? There are not as many as you think. But, but there are some. There are. So it would certainly be different treatment for, because those individuals are also paying into Medicare. We, which their, we are. Throughout their working life, and then they, then they get uh, employer-provided health retiree health benefits which we do we're not we're not recommending in this piece of legislation to re to reimburse their medicare payments are we no no no. what we're what we're saying here's what happens what we're saying is reamortize the amount of money based on the differential in a wraparound plan versus the full benefit plan that we have to pay through opm opm and fehb do not afford a retiree the ability to buy a wraparound plan that's what we'd like to do. We would like to work with them to set that kind of a plan up to reduce the overall costs. From a, from a Medicare perspective, the cost increase for Medicare on a yearly basis would be somewhere between $1 billion and $1.3 billion a year. So you're trading $55 billion in on the overpayments for us for a $1 billion cost increase okay. for Medicare. And, and, and I understand that with the postal system, but again, I think it's important to point out that that additional cost is going to be borne within the Medicare system, which, according to my 30-year projections, is, is about a $36 trillion deficit in Medicare over the next 30 years. You know, we, $1 of, of, of payroll tax going in, $3 of benefits going out. So again, I understand how and, you know, you're responsible for the postal system, but yes, I think sir. it's important to point out right. from the federal government standpoint, we're not saving anything. We have no, kind of argument, kind of no argument with that. We, we agree okay. that Medicare needs to be fixed. All we're asking for is level, play, level okay. playing field. Thank, Thank you. you.